Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm answering now question number five from the International A Level at Excel Mechanics M1 October 2021 session. Uh, this question here is about, um, I guess, statics. A small bead of mass 0 0.2 kilograms is attached to the end P of a light rod. So this is a small bead. The bead means it's basically um, got a little hole in it. It's like a, a spherical thing with a hole in it. And the the rod is going through this hole. Okay, it's like this. All right. The bead is threaded onto a fixed vertical rough wire. So this is like a wire, not a rod. It's threaded onto this wire, which is fixed and vertical. All right, so this is a, lot, a rod, not a string, a rod. Okay, a rod has... It's like a, a it's like a stick, not like a string. It's not flexible. It's like firm. The bead is held in equilibrium with the rod inclined to the white angle alpha, where tan of alpha is four over three. So the tangent of this angle alpha is four over three. Okay, we'll see how to deal with that in in a little while. It says the thrust in the rod is T newtons. Now, a rod can have tension and it can have thrust. Okay. Thrust is always pointing outwards and tension is always pointing inwards. If the rod is being pulled, like between two cars, okay, it has a tension. But for example, if the car face, for example, this car puts its brakes on and this car is going towards it, it's kind of it's like being pushed together. It's like there's it's being compressed, then there's a thrust that acts outwards. So what's happening here is there's a thrust acting outwards it's like being pushed this way and there's a thrust that's acting so the force acting on this bead is going to be in this direction okay that's what thrust means it's acting outwards all right that's very important for us to understand the bead is modeled as a particle find the magnitude and direction of the friction force acting on the bead when t equals 2.5 okay so now first of all let's deal with this tan theta equals 4 over 3 this is very important actually so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a random triangle. I'm going to call this alpha. I'm going to say the tan of alpha is opposite over adjacent, 4 over 3. So the hypotenuse of this triangle is going to be 5 by Pythagoras. 3 squared plus 4 squared gives you 25 squared. 25 is 5. 3, 4, 5 triangle. So the, the, the angles I will need or the ratios I'll need in my calculations, as we know, as we'll see in a few minutes, is the sine of the angle of alpha which is opposite over hypotenuse, and the cosine of the angle alpha, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Those are the two ratios actually we'll need in our calculations, not tan of alpha, but they gave us tan of alpha to help us find exact values for the sine and cosine of alpha. That's going to help us. Okay, the mass of the bead is 0 0.2 kilograms, so the weight of the bead is 0 0.2 g. Okay, and... I guess that's what we need to know. Okay, so let's just draw some forces that are acting on this bead. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw like a separate diagram next to this. Okay, I don't need this here now, one second. It's down here somewhere. Okay, so that's the bead, say. We have a force... We have the, the, the wire. Let's, let's, well, actually, I'll just draw the forces acting. The thrust is acting in this direction as 2.5 newtons. So what I'm going to do here, I like to draw the forces in such a way, like um, I'm going to draw the thrust acting in this direction here. That's the thrust, okay, which is 2.5 newtons. All right. And we've got the weight of the uh, bead, which is... It was 0 0.2 kilograms, so this is 0 0.2 g. This is the weight of the bead. And then you've got the frictional force, okay? So we've got to find the magnitude and direction of the frictional force. So the frictional force, at the moment, we're not sure in which direction it's going to, to act. We can kind of guess at it, but we're not sure whether the frictional force is going to act up here or down here, okay? So the frictional force has not reached its maximum possible value right yet. Okay, but it's uh, you know we don't know we 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 don't know whether it's reached its maximum possible value because we don't know whether it's in limiting equilibrium. But we know that this thing is in equilibrium, so the forces must balance out. 
Okay, there's also another force acting here, which is like when the two objects are in contact with each other, the bead and the and the um, the wire in contact, you'll have this reaction force acting out this way because the tension is acting over there. The reaction force will be like balancing it out this way. Okay, now we know that the angle, and we know, well, let me just draw the lines in here. So we know that this angle, let me just draw the line along here. We know that this angle here is alpha. Therefore, I can say this angle here is also alpha. Okay, because I want to resolve this force. Okay, so if I let's move this out of the way now. Let's get rid of this. Okay, if I now resolve the forces vertically, because that's how we're going to find the friction. Okay, um, the 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 forces acting up, and I'll do them separately. And the forces acting down. Okay, so from what I have so far, without the friction, the forces acting up are two point five times the cosine of alpha. 2.5 times the cosine of alpha, we have to go into the angle. We're looking for the adjacent side, you could say, of this right angle triangle, going into the angle. So it's 2.5 cosine alpha, which is 2.5 times, and we said the cosine of alpha was 3 fifths. 3 over 5, that's going to be a half, that's going to be 1.5 newtons. And the force is acting down without the friction, not without considering the friction, are basically 0 0.2 g. So, newtons, which is equal to, if we take g as 9.8, 0 0.2 times 9.8, which is what we're supposed to do in these questions, unless it tells you otherwise. So let me just check. I don't think it tells you otherwise, but I'll write this down first. That's going to give you 1.96 newtons. Okay, so we can see that. It doesn't say otherwise. So yes, yeah, so we take g as, as 0 0.9, sorry, 9.8. Okay, 9.8 g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can see here that upwards you have 1.5 newtons and downwards totally you have 1.96 newtons. So the friction has to be balancing out these forces. Okay, because it's an equilibrium. So if the only forces acting vertically are the, the component of the thrust vertically and the weight acting down, then the friction must be there to support okay, the thrust to stop it from sliding down. Because if you leave it like this, it's going to slide down because the weight is more than the component of the thrust. So therefore, the friction okay, acts upwards. Okay, acts upwards. And the friction is equal to the difference between 1.96 and 1.5 newtons. Okay, which is um, going to be 0 0.46, is that right? 1.96 minus 1 1.5, which gives you 0 0.46 newtons. So the friction has a magnitude of 0 0.46 newtons, and it acts upwards. So that's the answer to part A. Okay, so we basically found the f f forces acting down without the friction, the forces acting up without the friction, and then deduced that... The friction acts upwards. Why? Because this is an equilibrium. As it's an equilibrium, the forces must balance out. Okay? The upward forces and downward forces must balance out. So the friction must be supporting this so that it equals the forces acting down. Okay? So that's quite a simple part A there. Now we're going to go on to part B. Okay, it says, given the coefficient of friction between the bead and the wire is mu, Given that greatest possible value of T is 6.125, find the value of mu. Okay, so again, I'm going to make my diagram um, from here. I'll just do it from here like this. I have um, the thrust acting, again, upwards, but this thrust now is different. It's not the same as before. It's greater. Now, that's the maximum possible thrust for this to be in equilibrium. That's, that's what I'm assuming they mean. Okay, so that means this is now in limiting equilibrium. It's in limiting equilibrium. Now, the reaction force is going to act this way. The, f the weight is going to act this way. This is your angle alpha, as we said. This is the reaction force. And this is the weight, which is 0 0.2 g. Okay, so now, 
what we need to do is find the value of mu. So we have to. Now, the, of course, the values that we had for friction in the last part of the question do not apply here. Okay, so those values do not apply here. Okay, there's a new tension here. All right, so now what we're going to do here is we're going to resolve the forces vertically and also horizontally in order for us to be able to find what we need to find. So vertically you have 6.125. Okay, now we've got to think about which way the friction actually acts here. Okay, the friction is going to act if the thrust is acting upwards and it's a maximum thrust that it can be. Okay, it's a maximum thrust that it can be. Then the if the bead is going to want to be moving upwards, it's going to try to move up. Okay, the greatest possible value of t. If it was the least possible value of t, that means it's just enough to stop it from sliding down. But if it's the greatest possible value of t, it's 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 like just the limit before it starts sliding. Slide. If you increase it, it'll start sliding up and it'll be out of equilibrium. So in that case, the friction has to be acting in the direction which is opposite to the direction that it has to it wants to move. So the friction force, which because it's in its limiting equilibrium, will be the maximum friction, is going to be acting down. It's going to be acting down. So we can say 6.125 times cosine of alpha. Okay, it's still in equilibrium. That's going to be equal to 0.2g plus f max. That will be in equilibrium. The friction is its maximum possible value acting down because this is the maximum po possible thrust acting up. So that is, you know, about to move up. If it goes any more, this will move up because that's the maximum thrust for this to be in equilibrium. So it's about to move up. Um, so the friction is going to act down to stop it. The fric what's preventing it from moving up is the weight and also the frictional force, which has reached its maximum possible value. If this increases anymore, it won't be able to increase from that value and it will move. It's in limiting equilibrium. That's why I understand by saying the greatest possible value of T for this to be in equilibrium. That's what they mean. Okay, so we have one equation from that, and if we resolve horizontally, we have the the component of the thrust in this direction, which is going to be 6.125 times the sine of this angle. It's like you're trying to find the opposite side, or you're going away from the angle given, so it's 6.125 sine alpha. So you can say R is equal to 6.125 sine of alpha. So this will give us 6.125 times cosine of alpha, remember, was, let's remember, I think it was 3 over 5. Yep, and sine of alpha was 4 over 5. So cosine of alpha was 3 over 5, and sine of alpha was 4 over 5. Let's just make some space here. Okay, so this is equals 0 0.2g plus f max. So this is, let's right, work out what that is. 6.125 times 3 fifths. That gives us 147 over 40, which is 3.675 minus 0.2g. Okay, just working out that. 0 0.2 times 9.8. That gives us 1.715. So 1.715 is F max. And here we have R equals 6.125 times 4 fifths. Okay, so we have 6.125 times 0 0.8, 4 fifths. That gives us 49 over 10, which is 4.9. So R equals 4.9 newtons. So our we know that F max is equal to mu times R, so mu is equal to F max over R, which is 1.715 over 4.9. So 1.715 divided by the last answer, and that gives us 7 over 20. Okay, 7 over 20. Therefore, mu is equal to, I think, 0 0.35. Yep, 
Yep, 0 0.35. 0 0.35. That is a coefficient of friction between the f the bead and the wire. Okay, so we used F, F max equals mu r. We realized that we reached F max because the tension is the greatest possible value can be. If that's the case, then the bead is just about to slide up the wire. Therefore, the friction is, is always acting to prevent that happening. So it's acting down the wire in this case. And so we can just um, make an equation to find what F max must be. Okay, by resolving the forces vertically. And we know that F max is mu r. There's always a reaction force when two, two objects are in contact with each other. And as the thrust is acting like this, pushing the bead against the wire in this direction, the reaction is going to be in the opposite direction, but perpendicular, always perpendicular to the um, surface. So it's perpendicular to the wire, but in the opposite direction to balance out the force of the thrust acting in that, that, that direction. So you have R equals 6.125 times the sine of this angle. And then you got find what R is, and mu is equal to F max of R. And we get our answer. And there's the answer to part B. And I think that was it. Yep, that's it. That's answer. That's question five completed. Thank you for watching. Other questions you might want to find from this paper can be found in this playlist over here. Other questions about statics can be found in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. As I said, thank you for watching and see you soon.